So every time we hatch out chicks, I get the same questions. Why didn't you help that chick hatch out? You helped that chick too much. You took them out of the incubator too many times. And while there is no perfect way to handle every situation, sometimes we have to help and intervene to help a chick get out of the egg. I wanna premise this for any new person that wants to hatch out chicks that is impatient waiting for them to hatch out. And just wait, don't do anything. You'll probably do more harm than good trying to help them out of their egg than just letting nature take its course. But today, because of a heating issue and a new incubator we're using, we had to intervene. Otherwise, I don't think these chicks would have survived. We've got a new incubator experiment, and this one's gonna be a long-term one. This is something that we're gonna test out this incubator, we're gonna hatch eggs, we're gonna raise chicks for six months plus to get the result that we're looking for. And I'll explain that here in a minute. But first, let's open this incubator, and then we'll explain to you what we're doing. So when I got this incubator, this was the number one incubator on Amazon. $100, I think it's one that a lot of people would be interested in, so I'm excited to try this out. Big rectangular incubator, gonna be our egg turner. All these incubators on Amazon don't have a brand name. I think this one's actually called Salinovo 20 Egg Incubator. So it's got little dividers that we can put in here, and this is where it'll divide up the eggs, and then usually there's some kind of device. It's in our egg turner, so that'll connect in right there. It'll move the tray from that way over to this way. All right, I think I've got it pretty closely divided it up. So for the humidity, I hate incubators that do this. We just are doing a test with one right now. And so you have this little device that you pour water into. And sometimes you can pour a bottle in here, but I found that water just pours out like crazy. You pour water into there every so often. It pours in through the tube into the incubator. So plug goes on the side. That's not too bad. At least it's not poking out of the top. We do have an egg candle on here. That's cool. Incubator's ready to go. We're going to heat it up, but let me show you what eggs we're using and make sure it's all set before I start to turn this on. We have been collecting really colorful eggs from our young chicken flock for a while. We've got a bunch of different colored egg layers in there. We've got dark Brahmas, we've got blue lace red Wyandotte, we've got our black copper moraine egg, which is a really pretty dark brown. Easter eggers, it's another Easter egg egg. This is actually like a dark green right now. And then we've got our speckled well summer eggs. And here's what we're gonna do. For a long time, I used to have olive eggers at our old house and we had to sell off a lot of our chickens when we moved to this new farm and I've been wanting to have different colors in our egg basket. So this is a pretty normal egg basket for us where we've got our black copper morans, our well summers, our a little bit darker egg layers, lighter egg layers, and then our, our Easter eggers and then some white egg layers all the way back here. What I would like to do is have a way bigger egg rainbow where we're having olive eggs and different versions of olive eggs and I've seen some some more pink and purples, and some people will say it through genetics, and I'm gonna show a little chart up here because we have the general, and the general is a cream leg bar. So stay with me here, he's, he's a blue egg layer, and so we're gonna combine him with all of the eggs that we're getting right now that are in the young chicken flock from whites to light browns to browns to speckled browns to dark browns to greens and blues, and we're gonna see what we get, and then in six months when we raise these chickens up, We'll be able to show you what colors they lay. I've never really been into combining our chickens. I've liked purebreds, but I think this project will be really fun for us, really interesting to a lot of viewers that want to get more egg variety. So right now I'm just testing it out to make sure I've got everything at the right spacing so when I have it running, I don't have to mess with it again. Got this teeny tiny little egg in here as well. It's a little dark Brahma, so we'll we'll try that one for fun too. I think I can fit that in. So check that out. It's super pretty. I'm just one short but i like that color so i'm going to keep that but so we're going to get the incubator running get it up to the temp and humidity we want and then we'll put these eggs in and then in 21 days we'll hatch out a whole bunch of crosses with our cream leg bar rooster so we've got 19 eggs in here how many do you think you're going to hatch nine i think nine you think nine will hatch yeah. okay so after 12 hours we set the eggs in the incubator there's not a lot of visibility in this incubator and the condensation seems to block most of the view that's remaining so now we just have to wait 21 days and see if this incubator will help these eggs develop. So I knew I was a few days away from hatch day for these guys, but they are starting to pit. So I'm gonna move the egg turner out of there and then we'll see how they do. Ooh, this is gonna be fun. I see a lot of eggs starting to hatch. We'll come back and check on these guys in a little bit.
It is so crowded in here, but these guys have been hatching over the past day. It's really hard to see any of the chicks hatching because of how this is layered. Even though it's clear out here at the edge, I can't see in the middle. That's a little bit of a bummer compared to a lot of our incubators. There's still a few more hatching. So let's get a few of these chicks out because it is so crowded in here. And we can move them into the brooder they hatched a day ago. Might be our Easter egg there. Got some muffs on the side and our Easter egg in there was gray. We had quite a few dark Brahmas and some well summers hatch out. This design definitely looks like the well summer look. These guys look great. Now these both have some bluish gray feathers on the side. That could be from our blue lace red Wyandotte. Maybe a combo with the dark Brahma, but I'm thinking cream leg bar. This one's so red. These are two more that look really similar. Either that dark Brahma or well summer look, I'm not sure. I think this one just hatched out this morning. I'm hoping this is a black copper Moran combo because that'll give us our darkest green egg from the dark brown to the, the blue but this one just hatched out, so I'm gonna put it back in the incubator for a little bit, which I'm very relieved because most of our black copper marine eggs did not hatch. So I'm hoping that's what we've got here. Now there's two more in here that are pipping right now. So we're gonna keep an eye on this little well summer and this Easter egg. They're all chirping. They're chirping? Yeah. Should we get them out to the brooder? Yes. Five, okay. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten chicks plus the one in there. So we're at 11 with maybe 13. That's exciting. Look at the baby chickies. Now we cleaned out this brooder from, we had the Bruges fighter chicks in here that we just moved outside. So now we've got space in here for these guys. So I'm gonna put some fresh wood chips down for them. Oh. I love using trays like this. Lots of holes mean lots of chicks can eat at the same time. So we'll fill this up. Lastly, we just need some water in here. Now we're ready to move the chicks in. You did a good job getting them in there. So hopefully once they get settled in here, get used to it, they'll start to eat and drink a little bit. But that's what we first need to worry about is, are they getting enough heat? Are they staying warm with the air around them? Now I get a lot of people that ask me, when is a good time to help a chick out of its shell? This is a perfect opportunity. Now this chick here has created a pretty big opening for itself. And typically how their beak works is that they make a little line all the way around the egg called zipping and then it makes one big circle and then it's able to basically split in half. So since this chick is stuck almost on an island in the middle of this hole, it can't turn itself to get here and it's just gonna get stuck inside the shell and die. What I'm gonna do is take these tweezers here and then I'm gonna let the chick do the rest of the work. I don't wanna let it out because a lot of times you can cause bleeding. And so what I wanna do is just create a little bit of an indention all the way around. And so our well summer chick here, we wanna make sure he or she's able to get out before it's too late. But we also don't want to speed up the process too much that we cause any bleeding. So you can see right there, there's just a little bit of blood right on the edge. So we're gonna be really careful with anything that we pull away here. So we've given it a much bigger opening and then we've given it like a hinge here. So then now it can start to use its body to push that open. Let's put it back into the incubator now. Now this one right here, this is a Easter egg or egg and you can already see there's a pip started. Chick is peeping inside here. This has been one that I've seen pipped for a little over a day. So I'm a little nervous of it getting shrink wrapped into the shell. So this is one that I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna use these tweezers and then create a little line and then I'll let the chick do the rest of the work. And I just wanna be clear, if I saw any progress with this egg, I would not be touching it but I haven't seen it make any progress in a day. So we're gonna start gently by just pressing in. Could be some bleeding. There's a little bit of red on there. So we wanna be real careful that we don't pull away at this chick. We're just trying to create a, an easier way for the chick to push the shell apart. As we pull back, we get a little glimpse at the beak of the chick. There's a little 
there's a little bleeding right there so we want to be really careful and so again we want to create a little hinge like spot where this chick if it has the strength can push itself open now Ready for the chicks? All right, our final three. They all survived the day yesterday. So excited that our last two chicks that we helped hatch out. So here's the one black chick. I think this is a black copper Moran's. Really excited for this one because this will give us a nice olive green egg. What? What? Here, you want to hold this one? And here it is, the first chick we had to help hatch out yesterday. It's doing amazing. Didn't seem to struggle at all. As soon as it, it came out of its shell, just laid down, pretty much dried out now. So it's ready to go to the brooder. How exciting. And this one has just a little bit left of its umbilical cord, but it's all dried up. This chick is doing so well. I was really worried. It took a while to hatch out. It had some bleeding and it was all able to dry up. That's why I don't want to mess with it too much once we start the to help with the hatch. So I'm really excited. This chick looks so cool. You trying to get you trying to get to the babies? All right, let's move out to the brooder. So the chick's still alive in this egg. This is now a couple days after all of the eggs have hatched, and I was getting ready to toss this one out, and happened to see that it was not only pipping, but it was still alive. But I think at this point, I think it's gotten stuck inside this egg from, from sitting outside the incubator before I was getting ready to move it outside. So I think I'm gonna have to create a little circle around this egg as well so that this chick can hatch. Now we're gonna very gently hinge this shell a little bit just to give this chick a little chance to push it out overnight. That is the best part right there. Seeing the little chick's beak working its way to where overnight it'll be able to push this away and push its way out of the shell. This is amazing. I had given up on these eggs. I'd actually turned the incubator off, taken all the eggs out that hadn't hatched. I ended up candling them one more time just to make sure there wasn't anything in there. And these two, I saw movement. So I turned the incubator back on, got them back in there. One had pipped, we helped hatch out. And then the other one hatched out a day later, which I think was like day 24 or 25. It's probably the latest I've ever had an egg hatch. So I think this incubator was just a little cool on the edge and it just took a little longer to develop and hatch. Look at this little guy. He's a little black copper Moran crossed with cream leg bar. So cool. So cute. Let's get these guys out to the brooder. Well, our last video that we did in our, our little brooder shed here, people were kind of freaking out about the cobwebs that grow here over the winter. And no, it's not a million spiders. It's probably like one or two. And it's mostly dust that settles in here. And so nothing too creepy, nothing that a broom can't take out pretty quickly. Problem solved. <laughs> All right, well, the chicks have been doing great here in the brooder for about a week. And it's pretty nice weather outside. So let's get the chicks out and talk about some of these combinations of breeds that hatched out. All right, so I've got all of the eggs here with the exception of one. I must have accidentally gotten rid of one of the eggshells. These are cream leg bars. So these are pure cream leg bars with the general. These are Easter Egger combined with cream leg bars. These are dark Brahmas combined with cream leg bars. Well Summers and Black Copper Morans. And so I think we have one more dark Brahma right here. So it's a good variety, gives us a good chance for plenty of shades of olive green eggs later this year. Hopefully we'll be able to show you an update on, on that in about six months. See, a lot of them are very similar in appearance, but there's a couple that definitely look different. And it's really cool looking. Should we call that one, how about stripes? Stripey. Stripey? Yeah. Stripey. And then these two look to be our Americana crosses. They both have some, some muffs where it's very fuzzy to the side of the face. 
Now these are the two that I'm most excited about. These are our black copper Moran's crossed with the cream leg bars. So it's gonna take a, a dark brown or dark chocolate colored egg, combine it with a blue, and so it's gonna give us a really dark olive colored egg in about six months. I'm watching both be male. <laughs> Yeah, if they're roosters, they're not very helpful in this project. We're looking for eggs and olive eggs. So we're looking for olive eggs out of this and roosters won't produce that. So now we're down to the dark Brahma combinations. And we've got three that are a little darker, a little reddish color to them. And then one that's a lighter color. So you can see the lighter color and the darker color. So we'll find out in a few months on those if we end up having a, a rooster and three hens there. Has this one got a name? What's this one Turtle. Thing? Turtle? Yeah. Why is it turtle? Because I named him turtle. Oh, that's a good reason. Well, this is the last chick that hatched out and we have to help him out of the shell. But not from turtle. Yeah. Turtle might be a boy. No, it's a turtle. You think so? <laughs> it's a yeah. turtle. Turtle. Turtle is a girl? Yeah. All right, so let's talk about this incubator and then let's give it away. As far as incubators go, it's it's fun. I see the appeal, I see why it's popular. It's pretty simple and easy to use and I've gotta say the egg turners in it, they were whisper quiet. Heaters are actually at both ends right here and so that's good. That means it's gonna cover your basis but we had issues right here at the edges. I think just because of this clear plastic shell which is an issue with most incubators, they don't make the the covers thick enough. And so it gets a little cool towards the edges. We did have this covered with a blanket most of the time, but we didn't always have the ends covered. And so the eggs on the ends actually took the longest. And it was our black copper Moran eggs that were on this end that actually had to be helped out of their shell. They end up hatching out two to three days later than everybody else. This little deal, I'm seeing a lot of incubators that are starting to use this little thing. So you can pour water in without opening up the incubator throughout the hatch. It's all well and good, but man, do I hate having, they don't give you some kind of plug for that hole. It's this or nothing. And I would really like a plug there because I would have just put it inside the styrofoam and then I just would have raised the lid every so often, poured in a little bit of water, closed it back up, and then it would have been good to go. And I think all but two or three of our eggs end up hatching. Any egg that actually started hatching, hatch. So this incubator, I like it, it works. I don't love it. Probably about a six or seven out of 10 for me, but I'm giving this one away. So someone in the US is gonna win this and somebody overseas, somebody internationally is gonna get one shipped from Amazon from me. So all you need to do to win an incubator is to leave us a comment, let us know what you wanna hatch out and then where in the world are you? What country do you live in? We will randomly draw that in a week. Please be sure that you look at who the comments are from if somebody says you have won a giveaway because there are so many scams out there, so many accounts that are saying to go to Telegram to contact and we will not charge you anything if you win. These people are charging people shipping and they are not sending anything to them. So don't pay anybody anything. We are gonna pick two winners in a week. If anybody else tells you anything different, they're a scammer. Thanks for watching.